The Fifth Agreement, A Practical Guide to Self-Mastery, Chapter 13, The Three Languages, What Kind of Messenger Are You? The Fifth Agreement is the most advanced teaching of the Toltec because it prepares us to return to what we really are, messengers of truth. We deliver a message every time we speak, and if we don't deliver the truth, it's because we aren't aware of what we really are. The Four Agreements help us to recover awareness of what we are. They help us to become aware of the power of our word. But the real goal is the Fifth Agreement, because it takes us beyond symbology and makes us responsible for the creation of every word. The Fifth Agreement helps us to recover the power of belief that we invested in symbols. And when we go beyond the symbols, the power that we find is incredible because it's the power of the artistic creator, the power of life, the real us. The fifth agreement is for what I call messenger training or angel training because it's for messengers who are aware that they have a message to deliver. Angel is a Greek word meaning messenger. Angels really exist, but not the angels of religion with wings. We are all messengers. We are all angels. But we don't have wings, and we don't believe in angels with wings. The religious story about angels with wings is just a symbol. And as a symbol, the wings mean that angels can fly. Angels fly, and they deliver information, a message, and the real message is life or truth. But there are so many messengers in this world who don't deliver life, who don't deliver truth. The world is populated by billions of messengers with or without awareness. It's obvious that the majority are without awareness. They are programmed to deliver and receive a message, but they don't know they are messengers. The majority of the humans on earth have no idea that the symbols are their own creation. They have no idea where the power of the symbols comes from, which means that the symbols have complete control over them. What kind of messengers are they? The answer is obvious. You see the consequences in the world. Just look around and you will find out what kind of messengers they are. When you find that out, the fifth agreement makes even more sense. Be skeptical, but learn to listen. What will make a difference in these messengers? The answer is awareness. That is what messenger training does for us. It helps us to become aware of the kind of messages that we are delivering in the world. From the Toltec point of view, there are only three ways to deliver a message, or we can say that there are only three languages in the world of the humans. The language of gossip, the language of the warrior, and the language of truth. The language of the gossip is the one that all humans speak. Everybody knows how to gossip. When we speak this language, our message is distorted. We gossip about everything around us, but mainly we gossip about ourselves. If we go to another country where people speak a different language, we find that it doesn't matter what symbology they use, they speak like us in the language of gossip, in what I call the Big Matote. In the ordinary dream without awareness, the Big Matote takes over the human mind and creates all the misunderstandings all the distortions in the way we interpret the meaning of the words. The language of gossip is the language of the victim. It's the language of injustice and punishment. It's the language of hell, because all that gossip is made purely by lies. A human will always gossip because we are programmed to gossip until something shifts inside of us that is also in the program. This is when we rebel against the gossiping and the war begins in our head the war between the truth and the lies. The second language is that of the warrior. When we speak this language, sometimes we speak the truth and sometimes we speak lies, depending on our level of awareness. Sometimes we believe the lies, which takes us directly to hell, and sometimes we believe the truth, which takes us directly to heaven. But we still believe, which means the symbols still have the power of our belief. As warriors, we jump from one dream to the other. Sometimes we are in heaven, sometimes we are in hell. As you can imagine, the language of the warrior is a thousand times better than the language of gossip. But again, humans are programmed to shift the language we speak and to speak one more language. The third language is the language of truth. 
and when we speak this language, we hardly speak at all. At this point, we know without a doubt that the symbols we use are our creation. We know that we give the meaning to all of those symbols to communicate with our own kind, and we use symbols with impeccability the best we can to deliver our message, to deliver ourselves, because we are the message. Finally, there are no more lies, and there are no more lies because we have mastered awareness, because we see ourselves as life, as truth. The language of truth is very exclusive because it's the language of the dream master, the artist who has mastered the dream. In the world of the master, there is always music, there is always art, there is always beauty. The master artists are always happy. They are at peace and they enjoy their lives. These three ways of communicating are what I call the languages of 123, ABC, and Do Re Mi. The language of gossip is 123 because it's simple to learn and it's the language that everybody speaks. The language of the warrior is ABC because the warrior is the one who rebels against the tyranny of the symbols. The language of truth is Do Re Mi because for artists who have music in their heads instead of a big matote. The language of Do Re Mi is the one that I like to speak. My head is always full of music because music distracts the mind, and when the mind is not in the way, it's pure intent. I know that all music is in my head, it's nothing but a dream, but at least I'm not thinking and making a story. Of course I can make a story if I want to, and it can be a beautiful story. I can focus my attention on the symbols, and use the symbols that you understand to communicate with you. I can also use the symbols to hear what you say. Usually it is about your own story. You tell me many things that you believe are true, and I know that they are not. But when you tell me, I listen, and then I know exactly where you are coming from. I see what perhaps you don't see. I see the real you, not what you pretend to be. What you pretend to be is so complicated that I don't even bother to try to understand it. I know it's not you. The real you is your presence, and it's as beautiful and wonderful as anything on this earth. When you see a rose, open and beautiful, its very present makes you feel wonderful. You don't need to tell yourself how wonderful that rose is. You can see all the beauty and romance of that rose. You smell the rose, and the rose never says a word. You understand the message, but not with words. If you go to a forest, you see birds talking to birds, trees talking to trees, with another kind of symbology. You can see the inner communication of everything around you, and it's amazing. There are messengers everywhere in this world, but have you ever thought about it? Have you ever noticed that since you arrived in this world, you've always been delivering a message? Even before you were born, when your mother became aware that she was pregnant, your message was there. Your parents could hardly wait for your arrival for the moment of your birth. They knew that a miracle was happening, and as soon as you were born, you delivered the message right away with no words. They felt your presence, it was the birth of an angel, and the message was you. You were the message and you still are the message, but you've been distorted by the reflection of other messengers. It's not the messenger's fault, it's not your fault, and in fact it's nobody's fault. The distortion is perfect because only perfection exists. But then you grow up, you become aware, and you can choose to deliver a different message. You can choose to become a better reflection of life by changing the language you speak. You can change the way you deliver a message, the way you communicate with yourself and with other people. Now a simple question for you. I want you to understand the question, but don't allow that voice in your head to answer the question. Just allow these words to go directly into your heart where you can feel the meaning and intent behind the words. This is the question. What kind of a messenger are you? This is not a judgment. It's just a little doubt for your mind. But it's a big step into awareness. If you understand the question, then just this little doubt can change your whole life. What kind of a messenger are you? Do you deliver the truth? Or do you deliver lies? Do you perceive the truth? Or do you perceive only lies? The whole thing 
is between the truth and lies. This is the core of the problem, and this is what makes all the difference, because all conflict, whether it's inner or outer conflict between humans, is the result of delivering lies and believing in lies. What kind of messenger are you? Are you a messenger of gossip and lies? Do you feel uncomfortable with all the lies, with all the gossip, with all the drama that comes as a result of believing in lies? Is that what you share with everyone around you? Is that what you teach your children? Do you still blame your parents for your troubles? Remember, they did the best they could. If your parents abused you, it wasn't personal. It was due to their own fears. It was due to what they believed. If they abused you, it's because they were also abused. If they hurt you, it's because they were also hurt. It's an ongoing chain of action and reaction. Are you going to continue being a part of that chain, or is it over with you? What kind of messenger are you? Are you the warrior who struggles in between heaven and hell? Do you still believe people who tell you, this is the truth? Do you still believe your own lies? What kind of message are you delivering to the people you love the most if the message that you deliver to yourself is guiding you into hell? What kind of message are you delivering to your children whom you love so much? What kind of message are you delivering to your beloved, your parents, your siblings, friends, to everyone around you? What kind of messenger are you? If you tell me what kind of dream you're creating for yourself, I will tell you what kind of messenger you are. How do you treat yourself? Are you kind to yourself? Do you respect yourself? Do you respect other people? How do you feel about yourself? Do you like yourself? Are you proud of yourself? Are you happy with yourself? Is there any drama or injustice in your dream? Does your dream have a judge and a victim? Is it a dream of predators? A dream of violence? If so, your dream is distorting your message. The judge, the victim, and all those voices in your head are distorting everything. Right now, you're delivering a message to yourself and to everyone else around you. You're always delivering a message and you're always receiving a message from one mind to another mind. What is the message that you are delivering in this world? Is the message impeccable? Do you even notice that you are always using symbols? Just observe the messages that you're delivering. Are the words that you're speaking coming from the truth? Or are they coming from the voice of knowledge, the tyrant, the big judge? Who's delivering the message? Is it the real you? This is your dream. If it's not the real you, then who is delivering the message? Isn't that a good question? Can you see the impact of the words that you reflect to others as you speak? Just imagine that you are talking to a wall. Don't expect an answer. It's not for the wall to hear what you're saying. It's for you to see what's coming out of your mouth. It's for you to begin to see the impact of your words on everything around you. By talking to a wall, your message becomes more and more clear. After that, the importance of impeccability becomes obvious. Now I want you to use your imagination to see the kind of interactions that you've had in your entire life with other people. I'm sure you have lots of memories in your interactions with everyone around you. People are always delivering messages to you, and you're always perceiving their messages. What kind of messages are the other people in your life delivering? What kind of messages did they deliver to you during your whole life? How did all those messages affect you? Out of all the messages that you receive from other people, how many of those messages did you agree with and take as your own? How many of those messages are you still delivering now? If you're delivering somebody else's messages, whose messages are you delivering? Just have the awareness of the kind of messages that you've delivered your entire life and the kind of messages that you've received your entire life. 
You don't need to judge anyone, including yourself. Just ask, what kind of messenger am I? What kind of messenger are the other people in my life? This is a big step in the mastery of awareness. It's a big step in being a seer. Once you are aware of the messages that you're delivering and the messages that other people are delivering to you, your point of view shifts strongly and firmly. You clearly see the messages that other people are delivering to you and you clearly see what kind of messenger they are. Then the moment comes when your awareness is so expansive that you clearly see the messages that you're delivering to other people. You see exactly what kind of messenger you are. You see the effect of your words, the effects of your actions, the effects of your presence. You are always delivering a message to everyone and everything around you, but mainly you are always delivering a message to yourself. What is your message? That message is the most important one because that message affects your whole life. Are you the master who delivers the truth? Are you the victim who delivers lies? Well, it doesn't really matter if you are the master or if you are a messenger of gossip, full of poison, or if you're the warrior and you go up and down from heaven to hell, hell to heaven. You deliver the information that you have inside you. It's not right or wrong or good or bad. It's what you know. It's what you learned your whole life and it doesn't really matter what you learned. It doesn't really matter what you have been teaching, what you have been sharing. What really matters is to be what you really are, to be authentic, to enjoy life, to be love, and not the symbol of love that humans have distorted, but true love, the feeling you can't put into words, the love that is the result of being what you really are. Always remember, you are the force that's creating everything in existence. You are the force that opens a flower and moves the clouds the earth, the stars, and the galaxies. Whatever your message, love yourself anyway because of what you are, because you respect what you are. You don't have to be different unless you decide that you love yourself so much that you are no longer satisfied with the kind of messenger you are. Perhaps you've misused the word because you were innocent, because you didn't have awareness. But what happens when you have awareness and you're still doing it? Once you have awareness, you cannot claim innocence anymore. You know exactly what you're doing. And whatever you're doing is still perfect, but now it's your decision, it's your choice. Now the question becomes, what kind of message do you choose to deliver? Is it truth or is it lies? Is it love or is it fear? My choice is to deliver a message of truth and love. What is yours? Epilogue. Help me to change the world. If you are no longer satisfied with the kind of messenger you are, if you want to become a messenger of truth and love, then I invite you to participate in a new dream for humanity, one in which all of us can live in harmony, truth, and love. In this dream, People of all religions and all philosophies are not just welcome, but respected. Each of us has the right to believe whatever we want to believe, to follow any religion or philosophy we want to follow. It doesn't matter whether we believe in Christ, Moses, Allah, Brahma, Buddha, or any other being or master. Everybody is welcome to share this dream. I don't expect you to believe all my stories, but if they resonate inside you, if you can feel the truth behind the words, then let's make one more agreement. Help me to change the world. Of course, the very first question is, how are you going to change the world? The answer is, by changing your world. When I ask you to help me change the world, I'm not talking about planet Earth. I'm referring to the virtual world that exists in your head. The change begins with you. You will not help me to change the world if you don't change your own world first. You will change the world by loving yourself, by enjoying life, by making your personal world a dream of heaven. And I ask for your help because you are the only one who can change your world. If you decide you want to change your world, 
The easiest way is by using the tools that are nothing but common sense. The five agreements are tools to change your world. If you are impeccable with your word, if you don't take anything personally, if you don't make assumptions, if you always do your best, and if you are skeptical while listening, there won't be any more war in your head and there will be peace. If you practice the five agreements, your world becomes better and you want to share your happiness with the people you love. But changing the world is not about changing the secondary characters in your story. If you want to change the world, your world, the way you do it is by changing the main character of your story. If you change the main character, then just like magic, all the secondary characters will begin to change also. When you change, your children will change. Because the message that you deliver to them will change. The message that you deliver to your wife or your husband will change. Your relationship with your friends will change. Perhaps more importantly, your relationship with yourself will change. When you change the message you deliver to yourself, you're happier, and just by being happier, the people who live around you will also benefit. Your effort is really for everyone because your joy, your happiness, your heaven is contagious. When you're happy, the people around you are happy too, and inspires them to change their own world. We represent a whole legacy, and when I say we, I'm speaking for all humans. Our legacy is love, it's joy, it's happiness. Let's enjoy this world. Let's enjoy one another. We are meant to love one another, not to hate. Let's stop believing that our differences make us superior or inferior to one another. Let's not believe that lie. Let's not be afraid that our different colors make us different people. Who cares? It's just another lie. We don't have to believe all the lies and superstitions that have control of our lives. This is the time to end all the lies and superstitions that are not helping anybody. This is the time to end the fanaticism. We can return to the truth and be messengers of the truth. We have a message to deliver, and that message is our legacy. When we were children, we received the legacy of our parents and our ancestors. We received a wonderful world, and it's our turn to offer our children and grandchildren a planet where they can live as wonderfully and as well as we do now. We can stop destroying our planet. We can stop destroying each other. The humans can live in harmony. It's incredible what we can do if we really want to do it. All we need is to be aware of what we are doing and to return to our authenticity. I know that we have our differences because we live in our own personal dream, but we can respect one another's dream. We can agree to work together, knowing that each of us is the center of our own dream. Each one of us has our own beliefs, our own story, our own point of view. There are billions of different points of view, but it's the same light, the same force of life behind each one of us. Help me to change the world is an invitation to be authentic to be free. Open your heart to receive this agreement. I'm not asking you to try to change the world. Don't try to do it. Just do it. Take action today. The legacy that we leave to our children and our grandchildren can be magnificent. We can change our whole way of thinking and show them how to have a love affair with life. We can live in our personal heaven that follows us wherever we go. It's not true that we come to this planet to suffer. This beautiful planet Earth is not a valley of tears. Our new way of thinking can replace all those lies and take us to a wonderful place to live our life. Wherever I go, I hear people say that we come here with a mission, that we have something to do in this life, something to transcend. Whatever it is, I don't know. I believe that we come here with a mission, but our mission is not really to transcend anything. The mission that you have, and the same mission is true for all of us, is to make yourself happy. The how could be millions of different ways of doing what you love to do, but the mission of your life is to enjoy every single moment. 
We know that sooner or later our physical bodies will no longer exist. We only have a few sunrises, a few sunsets, a few full moons that we can enjoy. This is our time to be alive, to be fully present, to enjoy ourselves, to enjoy one another. In the last century, science and technology have grown so fast, but psychology has stayed far behind. It's time for psychology to catch up with the science and the technology. It's time for us to change our beliefs about the human mind, and what I see right now is almost an emergency. Because with computers and the internet, the way we are right now, lies can go all around the world very quickly and get completely out of control. The time is coming when humans will no longer believe the lies. We begin with ourselves, but the goal is to change the entire humanity, not just our own world. But how can we change the entire humanity if we can't change our own world first? Of course, it's not easy to separate, because in reality we have to do both at the same time. Then let's make a difference in this world. Let's win the war in our head and change the world. How long will it take for the entire world to change? Two or three or four generations? The truth is that we don't care how long it will take. We are not in a hurry, but we have no time to lose. Help me to change the world.